It's the morning Pittsburgh Sports Report. Trip Live Radio, triplive.com. Guy Junker, Ken Laird, Starling Marte is up, Guy. The Marte parte begins, to use the phrase from our John Anderson, Mr. Mick Effect. He was starting that trend on Twitter last night. Exciting times for Pirates fans. They want to see what Marte can bring to the team. Are you surprised, though? We had Clint Hurdle on our radio show last week, and he was telling us uh, about a magic number of at-bats, perhaps, that maybe Marte wasn't ready until he got McCutcheon at-bats and Neil Walker at-bats closer to 700 in AAA. You were looking up the numbers. What did he finish with? Uh, 384 at-bats. 384. Why the change of heart? Well, I'm, I'm not surprised because you're going to hear from – People like Clint Hurdle, and I, that's not a knock to Clint. I mean, management in, in sports are going to tell you whatever they need to tell you at that moment in time. I thought all along he was going to be called up after the trading deadline unless they got a corner outfielder in a trade. Does this mean now they're finished? They picked up Wandy Rodriguez. They brought him up. Are they no longer looking as, as these guys start disappearing, either re-signing with their old teams or, or being traded? Um, I, what I'm hoping for in him, Ken, is to come up – we saw with Pedro Alvarez, we saw with uh, Jose Tabata when they first came up, their first couple of months, their first year, they play, they hit well. Uh, they both took dips backwards. They both had similar amount of at-bats at AAA. So I'm thinking we might see a similar story with Marte if he struggles a little bit at the beginning of next year. Maybe there's one more AAA trip in him to the minors. Maybe he's in the majors to stay. But I'm hoping he doesn't flounder around right now that he comes up and sparks this offense a little bit. He's probably played tougher competition in the International League than the Houston Astros, so it's actually maybe it's a nice time. Would you play him leadoff and uh, in left field and just stick him in there for a week yeah, and see what, how that, it goes? That's what they're yeah, especially because that's a uh, a part in the pirate order that's of need right now. Why disrupt guys who are performing at their particular role in that lineup? Yeah, that's uh, that's what they say they're going to do, and that's what I expect them to do, and I have no problem with that. And typically, I guess your your strongest arm, and he does have the best arm in the system, would be in right field. PNC Park's obviously more cavernous and left, plus Garrett Jones, I would assume. Do you think he's the right fielder? for? I mean, is Presley now on the bench? I think it'll be a day-to-day thing. I mean, he likes to rotate those guys around and keep them fresh. Um, you know, get the, th- the thing that makes me say maybe is because of Garrett Jones' sudden ability to hit left-handed pitching, which he didn't seem to have before. In fact, I was hoping to ask him the other night. The night he hit the home run when they lost, and he, he was taking a long time to come out of the training room, and I had, I had to get my report in so I didn't get to talk to him, if he has started to do this just because he's getting the opportunity now, which he really – you know, if, you, if you're platoon, Ken, and you don't see a left-handed pitcher more than one – once a month or once every three or four weeks, it's going to be doubly hard to hit him. But he's been playing a lot against lefties. I think he's 6 for 12 or something similar to that. Yeah. Had his first home run against a lefty since last August uh, the other night. So maybe it's just a matter of getting a little bit more familiar with it. You, once you get you know pigeonholed into that platoon-type player hole, sometimes it's hard to get out of it. Yeah, Hurdle was mentioning that uh, Garrett's worked hard in the cage to stay back against lefties, not be lunging so much. And there are certain left-handers he'll pick his spots to put him in against that might uh, lead better to, to, to success. But McGee's not been playing real well with the bat at first since the All-Star break. That's the other concern. If he's going to play every day, he's got to swing the bat a little better. I'm sure they could move Garrett to first occasionally, too. Still impressed with his glove over there. Uh, yeah, maybe you put two nose guys a little bit. And I also think that you know Presley maybe becomes the defensive replacement in the outfield. I imagine Gorky Hernandez is the guy they're going to send down. Well, they but sent Meek down. Yeah, so, but, but yeah, they but have another move coming? They have, to, they have another move coming, okay. yeah. Well, I mean, it, uh, nobody would question sending Gorky's down. Because they're going to make room for Rodriguez. Right. Yeah. For a good point. Okay, so Wandy will start this weekend. So two new pieces to, for the uh, Pirates fans. That Yeah, to, we've been clamoring it for it for a long yeah. time. They, they've, they've gone out and done it. Maybe there's still a move left. Maybe this is who they'll go to battle with. Right now the concern is how do you stop the Cincinnati Reds, get them to play somebody besides Houston? Yeah, and their schedule is pretty, uh, pretty easy, actually. I mean, a lot of games with the Astros for the Pirates and the Reds. But uh, next month will be intriguing. All right, we'll uh, keep an eye on it. Buckos in Houston for a uh, series this weekend and then back with the Cubs on the road. With Guy Junker, I'm Ken Laird. Here in the studios, Trib Live Radio, TribLive.com.